Hello everybody, the Emerald G here. It's Rock Nerd Friday. Emerald, this video's late. No, it's not. Shut up. Let's get into it. So for today's video, I'm going to be talking about pretty much the most common rock. Uh, and if uh, this might be a weird system I'm going to do, but I'm going to try and go on like the most common and well-known rocks people know. Today, I'm going to be talking about quartz. And slowly throughout the, like, uh, weeks, I'm going to be getting to more complicated stones. And someday we might get to really complicated stones that only really I would or some other rock nerd that has nothing to do in their life knows. And you guys will be able to know. But today we're going to start with the very basics. Quartz. And by quartz, I do not mean, I'm not going to be talking about amethyst or rose quartz or anything else. I'm only going to be talking about legit, just crystal and clear quartz. Is that crystal clear? So the first thing you need to know about quartz is usually the information about it. I'm going to be talking about first in this first beginning part of the video. I'm saying first a lot. I'm going to be talking about in this beginning of the video, I'm going to be talking about mainly the things that make quartz uh, quartz. So let's get right into it. First, let's just get into information. Now here's some common information about quartz. Quartz chemical compound is silicon O2, also known as silicon dioxide. Its hardness, or Mohs hardness, is 7, and actually is the level of 7 on the Mohs hardness scale. Um, its color is colorless. Its color of its streak, also known as a streak, is white. Since it can be many different colors, it's just white. Um, its fracture is conchoidal and very brittle. Its cleavage actually has none to almost one. Its diaphanity is transparent to translucent, and its crystal structure is triagonal, hexagonal, and prism. I have a little sheet right here, because I can't read that all off my head. I need to do that, but uh, hopefully. Its density slash uh, specific gravity is 2.65, and its fluorescence is none. Now, I'm going to talk about some cool facts about uh, quartz. <laughs> okay, let's get into the cool facts. Fact number one. Some quartz can actually grow with methane liquid and gas inside them, making it so if you crack it open, you can actually light them up. Well, not like a bomb, but the methane gas can be lined up. Pretty cool. Fact number two. Some quartz can actually grow with rutile and tourmaline, a different type of stone, actually in them, creating these beautiful and amazing works of rock art. Pretty cool. Quartz is actually piezoelectric, meaning that it's not metal, but can actually conduct little electric sparks when rubbed together. And because of this, because it can somehow conduct and also make different types of electricity and vibrates when it does it, it is used in watches and actually in clocks. Quartz comes from the salvic word of quartz, meaning hard. Quartz is a category except for the normal typical quartz you see there are two different classes of quartz or systems of quartz one being macrocrystalline which is usually uh amethyst citrines and smoky quartz but then another which is cryptocrystalline which is your jaspers and chalcedonies and agates now i'm going to do a fun thing hopefully to you guys but fun to me where I'm going to talk about the largest ever discovered item of what we're talking about. Now, the problem with quartz is there's a lot of different ways quartz grow, so I'm actually going to talk about the biggest quartz cluster and the biggest quartz cave. So let's start with the cluster. The largest crystal cluster ever found was found in 1985, in 45 meters down in the Yawacho Mine near Karabia in Nab. Bibia? I butchered that. It weighs, it, well, it still weighs, but it weighs about 14,100 kilograms, and it took about three years to extract. I don't know where it is currently right now, but it is in a museum. Now, let's move on to the largest crystal cave. The problem is, this crystal cave isn't technically quartz, it's technically gypsum, which is calcium sulfide 4. Calcium silica, calcium? Sulfur, oxygen, 4 times 2 H2O, uh, also known as selenite, 
Uh, it's not really quartz, but just, I think it's in the quartz family. But we're just going to talk about it because it's the biggest crystal cave found. So let's... The largest crystal cave ever found is known as the Cave of the Crystals, or also known as Giant Crystal Cave. It was found in the Anchor Mine near Chihuahua, Mexico. It is about 300 meters down, also known as 980 feet. The largest chamber in that cave is about extremely big with selenite or gypsum crystals. The biggest chamber has the world's most biggest crystals found of selenite. Did it on the 15th try. I'm keeping it. Anyway, let's go on to my collection, actually, of quartz. This is going to be a fast-paced part of the video. I'm just going to quickly and swiftly talk about my quartz crystals and everything. So let's get to it, and let's get to it. First up, we have two raw pieces of quartz. These are just clear, transparent. I got these at the Cave of the Winds from Colorado. These are just, you know, simple, basic see-through, transparent, as you can see. They're just basic. Anyway, next ones. This one is a crystal point. This was grown in a prismic uh, isotropic uh, point. I got this for Christmas 2019 from my grandma. Next up, we have a lot of pieces of quartz geodes. Uh... I got, then there's a little piece I broke off. This is also known as Druzy Quartz, by the way. When it's very, very, very small clustered together pieces of quartz. That's known as Druzy. I got this. This was a singular uh, quartz. I got these from also the Cave of the Winds. And this was a gift uh, from a friend because they know I like rocks. And they got me this little quartz geode. Anyway, next up, we have this dyed quartz. This was actually given to me also on Christmas by a friend. This one is uh, its known as spirit quartz. Basically, they fake make it in the middle, and it grows out, and then they dyed it. So quartz and agate are one of the most well-known uh, dyeing things. This is also one because you can, like, dye the quartz while it grows, but it has this weird paint on the back, which is really annoying to get on my hands. So... Next up, I have crystal points, and these ones are actually in their own little thing since they're so clear and small and they're like points. Uh, I also got these from the Cave of the Winds in Colorado, uh, and you can see they're, you know, a little diagram. This is milky rutile quartz, this is what I was talking about. As you can see, there's rutile pieces of quartz. I have a clear tumbled piece, so you can see a little more clear uh, the rutiled pieces in there. And I also have some tourmalated quartz, that's tourmaline, also known as squirrel tourmaline, or scarl, I don't know how to say it, but yeah, this is uh, tumbled pieces of tourmaline. I got these uh, when I went to the Crystal Moon Gallery, I pretty much raided the uh, whole entire store and I got these ones. Uh, I got the this one uh, this year, Christmas, last year, 2019. This is cat-eyed quartz. If you don't know what cat-eyed quartz me is, it's basically in a specific light, it will shine almost like a cat's eye. Uh, it's in a cabochon, meaning it's a flat uh, back and a dome shape. It's not that good of a cabochon, it's more like a tumbled kind of flat, but I like it, it's pretty cool, and it does have a cat's eye if you look at it correctly, and I was really amazed by that. So, there's not that many of these ones, but yeah. And if you don't know what cat's eye it is, well I just told you, it's just, you know, the light reflects in the cat's eye. And that's basically all my singular quartz I own. I own a lot more quartz than this. And hopefully I'll get more. So, yeah. Bleh! So, yeah. This video wasn't really uh, much for anything. Uh, I just wanted to give you guys something to, like, watch. Because I did promise. I, I don't want to be late on videos. But today, uh, I do, I've been backed up with school, of course. And, of course, I'm going to say this right now, actually. Uh, schooling and just me having a social life and YouTube. Uh, I want I, I put it on YouTube because I want to have fun. I want to be silly. I want to be weird and stupid, but also at the same time smart. Uh, but at the same time, I have schooling and social life. And soon I will be getting a job. When all of this whole entire business is over, 
uh, I'm going to go see if I can find a job and get a job. Uh, and if, you know, if I can't juggle school and my social life and uh, my job, I might actually have to drop YouTube. I don't know. Hopefully not. Uh, I do have plans for the rest of this month, so don't worry. Uh, but yeah, uh, the end intro. I completely forgot it yesterday, but I remembered it now. Rock on, nerd out, the Emerald G out. Peace.